Developed by Roll7 and published by Private Division, Oli Oli World is the third game in the series and feels like an amalgamation of the platform genre, a free runner and a touch of adventure. This entry looks to be much less punishing to new players while still catering for the more able players. They shift away from the pixel art of old and move to a beautiful hand-drawn style with colours that pop out of the screen. Is it worth you popping this into your purchase list or should you shove it into the avoid pile? Well, let's find out. Oli Oli World has a full narrative based in Redlandia. With the inevitable retirement of the previous skating wizard, one who has ascended to the very upper echelons and who has quite literally ascended to the heavens. And that's where you come in as the newest recruit with the potential to fill those epically sized vans. And you'll be joined on your adventure by a ragtag band of characters and also meet a few along the way. Now Redlandia is essentially a skateboarding paradise that's segmented into five different areas. They're based on real life locations, such as Los Volgas, and each has its own aesthetic style. As far as gameplay and controls go, the first port of call will be your character creation. You can choose your gender, skin color, as well as a multitude of customization options as far as apparel, from the glasses you wear to the skateboard, down to all your accessories and other items, and by the end of the game you will have unlocked hundreds more. Oli Oli World plays a little like an endless runner. You can press A to do a push or hold it for a power push, and holding the left stick in any direction will ready a trick, release in it and that trick's performed. New moves are drip fed through the five different areas and you'll be learning new things right up until the end of the game. But there is quite a bit of post-game content and I'll go into that in a while. Each stage presents a number of challenges but to progress you'll just need to finish it. The challenges shown here are entirely optional but will unlock new gear. Alongside different tricks there are advanced moves to be learnt and for anyone familiar with Tony Hawk's you'll understand the importance of being able to manual upon landing as it allows you to continue that combo. Now combos are shown at the top of the screen and are one of the areas where the developer tweaked the difficulty. When you land, rather than crashing out, if you haven't performed a manual or other move, then your combo will reset to zero. This becomes very important because each stage has three local legends for you to beat. Once again, these are optional, but through doing so, you'll unlock new gear. The levels vary in length and difficulty, but many of them have alternate routes. By pressing Y, you can shift track, sometimes entering a much more tricky area with larger rewards. And you may also need to do this to meet some of those challenge criteria. Thankfully, particularly in some of the latter stages, there are a number of checkpoints. If you go wrong, you can press X to instantly restart from there. And for me personally, these are a very welcome addition and really alleviated some of the more frustratingly difficult areas. While the controls feel fluid and sensible, I can see why the new abilities were drip fed into the game. If you were given everything right at the start, it could get very confusing. Having the left stick to ready the jumps, the right stick to hold grabs, timing the A button just as you land and the right stick to perform manuals, rotating with the triggers in the air. It's certainly a lot to think about at times, especially when you're chasing those high scores. That's not to say it's a bad control system though, far from it. And when everything's flowing, and I think that's probably the best way to describe the game, it's a fluid and well thought out control system. Completing stages allows you to move through the overworld map. Sometimes you'll have a few choices with the criteria of needing to complete two out of three or two out of four of them before you can progress. There are even side quests here. They simply add a little bit more exposition and I think it's an area the developer could really flesh out. There's potential here to go almost the RPG route while still maintaining these mechanics for the stages. It is nice to have some choice but it is still quite linear and each of the areas is overseen by one of the gods, the skating gods that is, and their stage is supposedly a little more tricky but personally I think they missed a trick. They could have used these mechanics to create some form of awesome boss boss fights or boss skate battles. I'm not sure how it would have worked, but as it is, the last stage is just more of the same and that's not necessarily a bad thing. It just felt like the narrative was gearing me up for something special. For those players that really push to meet the challenges, they'll be unlocking secret items, levels and gear, but also some tutorials for more advanced tricks. Things like chaining together multiple moves in the air. You aren't told about this unless you unlock that tutorial. It's good because it's not essential to the game, but it achieves the goal the developers had of 
essentially allowing the player to set their own difficulty. I'm going to talk briefly about the post-game content. If you don't want to know about this, then skip to the next section. There'll be timestamps up above. Once you've rolled credits, you'll unlock the multiplayer aspect of the game. This area is shown over on the right-hand side of the screen, and it creates tournaments among players online. It's implemented really nicely. You're given 10 minutes to do as many runs as you want, with your scores shown on the left-hand side of the screen over here. You could hit a massive score and just sit back in the waiting area ready to advance, but if you're struggling, you can really take your time. But it becomes apparent quite quickly who spent the time learning those more advanced moves. Thankfully, you have uh, an encyclopedia of tricks, useful if you're struggling to beat someone's high score. The final post-game unlock allows you to create your own stages. You can put in a number of criteria, and it will generate you your own level. Much of Oli Oli World is about competing for high scores, and although there's no local multiplayer, creating a stage and then battling other people in your household has certainly proved quite fun in mine. But a split screen dedicated multiplayer would have been lovely. Overall, then, Oli Oli World is a very slick and well produced game that does a reasonably good job of merging an adventure game with a skating one, but which wasn't quite as open as I'd hoped. Its key success, though, is its accessibility, the excellent stage design, and the very tight controls. I give gameplay 17 out of 20, and the controls score 18 out of 20. Visually, Oli Oli World looks beautiful, from the sheer quantity of customization options to the delightful hand-drawn style running at a silky 60 frames per second. It's stylish in the same way as something like Splatoon, and could very well have been a first-party title on any system. It isn't flawless as far as performance goes. It's 90%, but I did see a couple of frame drops on some stages. The soundtrack is outstanding. And as well as unlocking cosmetics, you will also unlock some new audio. You can quick switch tracks at any point. Even from a load menu, tap in the bumper button, or switch the song, and there are some bangers in there. As far as handheld performance goes, the game is exactly the same. It looks great, very crisp visuals, and font size is all absolutely fine. Visuals and performance score 18 out of 20, and the audio scores 19 out of 20. It took only around about six to eight hours to finish the adventure overworld of Oli Oli, but as I mentioned, there's a wealth to unlock post-game, and it was a smart move teaching the player everything they needed before they headed online. With that said though, there are those that may not be interested in doing absolutely everything and just want to finish the game, and at six hours, it's potentially a little short. Combine that with a £24.99 or your regional equivalent asking price, and it's also not cheap. In terms of presentation polish and gameplay, I do think it does enough, but there are things to consider. Overall, I give value 16 out of 20. Oli Oli World is a very fun and polished skating game. Whether you're a complete novice or an advanced player, it caters for both equally, and there's lots for the completionist to go back and do. It gets a switch up score of 88%. Is this a game you've been interested in? Are you looking out to pick it up? Or will you be waiting for a sale? Thanks to all of you that watch the channel, that enjoy our reviews, and to our patrons, you guys are awesome. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!